وصف الأنين بداخلي كم مرة قد ذاق قلبي من أسى محرمتها وكم كرهت مصابها لكن رأيت خير يسكب في أنا كم مرة قد ذقت من عظام البال بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As you all are aware a movie is due to hit the cinemas or movie theaters if you're in the States in about a week's time in, uh, in the UK and the movie is called The Lady of Heaven as you can see on screen and this was a production or the script writer was in fact Yasser Al-Khabith and a lot of brothers have asked me Haji what are your thoughts on this movie what's your thoughts on this particular narrative etc etc now this book here Kitab Sulaim ibn Qais Al-Hilali I'm not going to go into this book, I'll do this in another video, but the basic, the origins of this story come from this book, okay? Now, as I said before, I'm not going to go dwell into the asanid of the book, you know, and the details of the book, that will be done in another video. But nevertheless, okay, what we will tackle in this video is that the, the, the Shia don't commit to a narrative, okay, of this particular story. And when it comes to the burning of the house, when it comes to obviously uh, Fatima radiallahu anha uh, being attacked by uh, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and due to the attack on the house, she lost her unborn child whose name was Muhsin. And it, 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 there's other details but obviously this book which I will go into in another video will highlight that. And there's no timeline. So... The book itself is dubious, it's a fabrication, you understand? Let's get that out there. Abu Bakr and Umar did not attack the house of Ali anhu, nor did Umar bin Khattab anhu attack Fatima. Let's be completely honest. If Abu Bakr and Umar attacked the daughter of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will Ali Sunnah wal Jama'ah hold these two noble companions in high esteem if they committed such an atrocious act? In this video, I will be asking some hard-hitting questions using Shia sources. This is an extensive academic response to those who believe in this fabrication. And what we'll show you is that they cannot commit to a narrative nor a timeline. Because it's riddled with inconsistencies, it's riddled with fabrication, and this video will prove it once and for all. The summary of the story is that Umar al-Khattab attacked the house, Fatima anha was behind the door, he pushed the door, that pressed onto the stomach of Fatima radiallahu anha who was pregnant with an unborn child and due to that attack Umar radiallahu anhu allegedly attacked her as well uh, hit her with the uh, the end of his sword whipped that absolute horrific uh, details uh, which is in this book here and she lost her child so she lost her unborn child she had a miscarriage okay she had a miscarriage of her unborn child who the Shia uh, called Muhsin with all due respect, this fabrication is ghair it's, it's, it's There's no logic. If someone was true, sincere, once we obviously deal with the facts, you, you would think, you know what, this is just nonsense. Now, Muhsin. How old was Muhsin allegedly when Fatima radiallahu anha had a miscarriage? Okay, because this is important. Because it leads up to all the other events that the Shia themselves have propagated. So we would ask, Okay, let's connect everything together and you will, sh you will see why the Shia don't present any timeline because it's a fabricated story and they cannot keep up with the inconsistencies. So as you can see on screen, we've got the book Biharul Anwar. Biharul Anwar by Baqar al Majus. And he mentions that Qunfudun entered and opened the door and he mentions La'natullah. That is Qunfudun, who the hell is he? Uh, the, the, the narrative from the Shia is that this person along with Umar radiallahu anhu attacked the daughter of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam astaghfirullah al-azim then he mentioned that Umar radiallahu anhu then whipped Fatima radiallahu anha between her shoulder and her arm or elbow rather um, and it basically continues and then he mentions he kicked the door okay with his leg kicked the door 
حتى أصاب بطنها وهي حاملة بمحسن that he until he it hit her stomach okay and she was pregnant with Muhsin and what does it say this is what I need to get your attention to this is what I want to get your attention to please pay attention to this it mentions that Muhsin was how old when she lost him it mentions that he was six months old so Fatima anha was six months pregnant with Muhsin when she uh, had a miscarriage okay so coming back to me now so according to Bakr al-Majlisi Muhsin when he was killed allegedly by Umar anhu, Fatima anha was six months pregnant with him six months you know we have submitted to your argument for the sake of progressing this further now bear in mind okay bear in mind Fatima anha was six months pregnant when she lost Muhsin now anyone that is married and has had a baby would notice that when their partner when their wife is six months pregnant is proportionate in size you know the baby is you could say near enough developed or if not developed okay i think the next three months or so is just the baby putting on weight you know the skin formula in um, again you could speak to a doctor as to the you know stages as when the baby is basically fully developed. But six months is a very long time. So Fatima anha when Umar anhu allegedly kicked the door, the door hit her stomach, according to another narration or some narrations in uh, Kitab Sulaim ibn Qais, uh, there was a nail, a mismar, that you know, basically due to the force, it pierced her, etc. Whether there were doors at that time or not, is again, that's a different story altogether. So a six month old baby has been killed by Umar anhu. Fatima anha had a miscarriage at six months you notice as this as i continue why the shia don't place a timeline or commit to a narrative because all of these are from their sources so we would say okay leave the asani leave whether the book's been distorted etc they accept this okay as you will see from the movie that's coming out the lady of heaven so muhsin is six months old okay so it's only common sense and logical that this is the start of what transpired in terms of the events now. So Muhsin has been killed six months. Fatima anha has lost Muhsin. Okay, at six months old. So what happens thereafter? So according to this book here, uh, when this happened, I mean, Umar's beating her, etc. And she lost the baby. He jumped on uh, Umar anhu and, you know, was, was hitting him. But then he remembered what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, etc. Absolute, you know, again, this is belittling the status of Ali radiallahu anhu. Um, but again, we'll deal with that in the other video. Ali anhu was captured, was tied up and taken away. Okay. Now, Ali anhu explains what happens to him uh, when he wrote to Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. This is in Najul Balaga. This is Najul Balaga. And as you can see, here you go. Najul Balaga. So this is volume 3, page 553. Those who are interested, go to sermon number 28, it's in there. Ali uh, writes a letter to Muawiyah and he's basically uh, having a uh, back and forth with him. And he mentions here, he says, وَقُلْتَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ أُقَادُ كَمَا يُقَادُ الْجَمَلُ مَحْشُوشُ حَتَّى أُبَايَا He mentions that you said that I was dragged like a camel, okay, with a rope around my neck until I pledged, okay? And he's basically saying that you are indeed trying to humiliate me by this but indeed you're praising me Ali anhu continues and says وَمَا عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ مِنْ غَضَّادَةٍ فِي أَنْ يَكُونَ مَظْلُومًا مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ شَكَّاكٍ فِي دِينِهِ وَلَا مُرْتَابًا بِيَقِينِهِ I'm just going to summarize so basically he's saying that there is no disgrace for a Muslim who is oppressed or subjugated with suppression um, provided that he has faith in his religion and he is um, you know, has yaqeen, has sincer uh, um, certainty uh, for that. And it's basically a proof for me and not for you, but whatever you're intending, etc. So, here you go, we've got Najul Balagha. According to this statement here, and we're going to prove uh, that this happened in another book, that Ali Rada Anhu, after Fatima Anhu was attacked, uh, whipped, beaten, lost a six-month-old baby, six-month-old, bear that in mind as well, okay? Six-month-old baby, Ali Anhu was allegedly uh, tied up and dragged out the house and he's saying to Muawiyah Anhu that look you're trying to taunt me and humiliate me by saying that I was dragged out like a camel but this is indeed uh, praise for me it's not humiliation because provided I'm firm if a person's oppressed 
providing a Muslim is firm on his religion and uncertainty, etc. You would imagine that Fatima Anha would be in excruciating pain. You know, she's just lost her six month old baby. You know, she'd be grieving. She'd be in extreme, extreme pain. That's what you would think, wouldn't you, based on the narrative, okay? What happens after Ali Radan who was dragged out according to Najul Balagha? As you can see, Mahan, I've got Al Ihtijaj by At Tabrazi. At Tabrazi mentions that I haven't presented most of the isnad of the reports that he mentions. Why? Why hasn't he done that? He says, Imma li wujud al ijma It's because of the consensus about these narrations. So there's ijma on these narrations. It's not dubious. There's no shudud. It is ijma on it. All something that the intellect agrees with. Okay? Or something that the intellect agrees with. So this is page six uh, in Ihtijaj. Go check it out. Now, the reason why at tabrasi didn't mention, okay, didn't mention the chains, because what they'll do is they'll say, oh, but where's the chain in this? at tabrasi is saying, he goes, the reason why I'm presenting most of the chains in this particular book is because it's something that it's, there's an ijma upon. Or in agreement with the Akan. So just to get that idea, that was just a side um, piece of information just so that those uh, who are arguing okay well where's the uh, chain of narrators obviously it's in the footnotes you know when I present it you guys can do the checking you guys could re verify if this or narration is authentic or not so he mentioned the narration of Sadiq alayhi salam now bear in mind that the chain of narrator is not in here but as per the muqaddimah per the introduction a tabarisi states that the reason why he hasn't presented chain of narrator for most of the the book it's because it's, there's an ijma' on it. There's a wujud of ijma' on it. Or the intellect agrees with it, according to the uh, Shia. Lama istakhraja Amirul Mu'minin min manzilihi. That he mentioned that when Amirul Mu'minin was taken out of the house by force, according to the narrative, uh, and as per Najib Balaga, what Mu'abir anhu said to Ali, that, you know, you said I was dragged out like a camel uh, until I was forced to pledge. So, you see, it co collaborates that. So, then he mentions, kharajat Fatima, salawatullah alayha. Um, that Fatima r.a. Uh, followed and left as well behind him or followed him okay so she's lost a six month old baby she's been severely beaten okay but she ran out left a six month old baby there and she ran out with the women of the Hashemiya okay until they were close to the grave meaning the grave of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she said to them meaning Abu Bakr and Omar and the rest of the companions leave the son of my uncle for I swear who sent Muhammad my father, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the truth. If you don't let him go, I will uncover my hair. Okay? And I will bring the qamis of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala ra'si. And I will present the, 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 the qamis, the shirt of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on my head. Qala Salman, radiallahu anhu, meaning Salman al-Farsi, radiallahu anhu, kuntu qareeb minha. I was close to her. Okay? Meaning Fatima, radiallahu anha. فَرَأَيْتُ وَاللَّهِ he, for, uh, Salman al-Farsi is saying For wallahi I seen the walls or the foundations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's mosque Okay Coming up from underneath حَتَّى لَوْ أَرَادُ الرَّجُلْ He said that even if a person, a man wanted to go underneath it Meaning the walls Because of, of Fatima radiallahu anger The walls of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised up to the point of Salman al-Farsi saying that if a man wanted to go underneath it, he can do. Then Salman al-Farsi anhu said to Fatima radiallahu anha, Ya Sayyidati wa Mawlati, Inna Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ba'atha abaka rahma, fala taquni naqma. Salman radiallahu anhu was saying to Fatima, he said, Oh madam, meaning addressing her with respect, Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent your father with the rahma, so don't, you know, become a person of anger or vengeance, etc. And the walls of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returned back as they were, and then they basically uh, went back. Okay, so, Al-Ihtijaj by at tabrasi So, get into the, the, the sequence or the narrative or the timeline. She was beaten, okay? She was whipped, she was, she, she, the door pressed onto her stomach, she lost a six-month-old child. Number two, Ali Rada'anu was dragged out, okay, was dragged out, and then he mentions in the uh, Najul Balaga, then he further con confirms this, as mentioned by Ihtijaj, that she, when Ali Rada'anu was taken out, she followed, okay, she followed. Now, I had to add some context into this, okay, Fatima Radulahu Anha lived for uh, roughly, according to Shia sources, 75 days after the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, passed away, 
so she lived for 75 days so let's add the narrative she was beaten she lost a six-month-old child she was able to go and run out the house and follow the oppressors uh, who took out her husband uh, by force for them to pledge to Abu Bakr anhu. now to add more context to this you will see that Fatima anha was severely ill was very ill to the point that she was in her house okay she was in her house so <laughs> connecting the the timeline and, and adding context and presenting a narrative which the Shia unfortunately uh, are unable to do this is an academic response by the way at the end of the day we've got our right and it's my academic right to present the evidences to show that this is not true uh, not uh, the tabari of al sunnah this is a uh, tabari al imami so because it's a lengthy narration i'm just gonna get to the main points it says what bi mecca she was in mecca for eight years wabil medina ashur sinin and she was in medina for 10 years wafati abiha that she lived or survived after the death of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, 75 days as you can see where it's mentioned here 75 days then it states that she passed away okay subhanallah al-azim she passed away on the uh, Tuesday of uh, Jumada al-Akhar on the 11th year after the Hijrah of the Messenger of Allah now look what it says now the reason for her death was that Qunfudun, the servant of Umar anhu, poked or basically like uh, jabbed at her with the back end of the sword, okay? And she lost Muhsin, okay? She lost Muhsin, the six month old baby, remember this. And she was ill because of that, Mardan Shadidan. She was severely ill because of this. Severely ill because of this. Bear that in mind as well now, okay? She was what? Severely ill. And then it continues on. Like I just don't want to sort of drag this on because you know I don't want to make it too lengthy. And then he mentions says, وَكَانَ رَجُلًا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ سَأَلَ أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنْ يَشْفَعَ لَهُمَا إِلَيْهَا That he mentions that two men from the companions of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم asked Amir al-Mu'mineen meaning Ali to intercede for them. فَسَأَلَهَا أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَأَجَابَتْ That she, she Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali asked her and she basically requested that they enter. فَلَمَّا دَخَلَا عَلَيْهَا قَالَ لَهَا That when they entered upon her, they said to her, كَيْفَ أَنْتِ يَا بِنْتِ رُسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ How are you, O daughter of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم? قَالَتْ بِخَيْرٍ بِحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ She said, praise be to Allah, I'm fine. The Fatima Rabbi Anna said to them both, um, have you not heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say the Fatima is from me? Okay, Fatima is what? Is from me. فَمَنْ آذَاهَا فَقَدْ آذَانِي Whoever hurts her, hurts me. Uh, whoever hurts me, hurts, hurts Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. قَالَ بَلَى Yes, of course. And then Fatima Radina Anna said that I swear by Allah, uh, you both have hurt me. And then the narration ends by saying فَخَرَجَا they both left min indiha wa hiya saqat alayhima and then the, she was angry with both of them meaning uh, abu bakr and umar this is bihar al anwar as well um, volume 43 page 11 to 18 that fatima anha was severely ill mardan shadidan severely ill now bear in mind she lived for 75 days okay keep that in the locker she lived for what 75 days and she's ill she's lost a six month old child Okay, you would think that Fatima Radha has bedridden because she only lived for like just over two months. Do you understand? Just over two months and she was severely ill. Now that you've understood the timeline, you've now had a deep insight as to the narrative from the Shia. Again, this book, this parked here, put below, yeah, there you go. This book, Kitab Sulaim ibn Qais, even Shia scholars themselves, I've said stay away from me and I'll, I'll explain that in another video not one more than one so going into the timeline and the narrative because they don't commit to a narrative and you understand why so what happens next she's severely ill she's lost a six-month-old child her husband got dragged out she ran out after him she's severely ill you would think that she would ask for retribution for killing her six-month-old child Fatima Radha Anha being severely ill, died 75 days after, obviously brutal attack. Do you know what she does next? She goes and delivers at least a 40 minute speech in the Prophet's mosque requesting her right. 
And this is called khutba al fadaqiyya so as you can see on screen, we've got aqaid.com. It's a very famous uh, Shia website. And, they, and, and just to summarize, there's a question by al Maqdad from America, al Maqdad from America, asking about the um, authenticity of the uh, khutbah al fadakiya Khutbah al fadakiya And the, the answer, uh, al-jawab, is given. It says that first of all, we need to sort of uh, get to an important point. That the weakness of the chain of narrators, okay, doesn't affect its authenticity okay it doesn't affect its authenticity we're getting to the main point now with our resolve said as for the khutbah al fadaqiyya that is possible and you could be content that this came from the chest of a zahra alayhi salam okay then it states min jihati min jihati that this has been narrated from the angle of tawatur that this particular statement is not far fetched okay that this came from a zahra wa ma'na tawatur and the meaning of a tawatur this riwayah has been narrated by groups of people that you could be content that there is no lie because it's been narrated by mass people okay and we judge upon its authenticity because it's narrated by mass transmission it said possible that you could return back to some of the asanid of this honorable khutbah which has been mentioned by at tabari tahta anwan hadith fadak safha 31 wa 33 under the chapter of fadak page 31 to 33 yeah and this is page 109 by the way it's not 31 to 33 it's 109 and it continues on all the way so as i, as I presented she's severely ill She's lost an unborn child, she was beaten, six month old child, and she's going to Abu Bakr. So when she heard about Abu Bakr preventing her to, for Fadak, so she's not asking for Qisas, she's asking for her property, her land, not retribution. So she went there, she went and entered upon Abu Bakr. Okay, but she was severely ill. To recap, she's been beaten severely, she's lost a six month old child. She's severely ill, okay? She lived for only 75 days, okay? Does she ask for Qisas? No, she comes to ask for her land, for her property, for her money. Look at how many pages this speech goes on for. Then I'm gonna show you a YouTube video to show you how long it is, okay? So he mentions that when Fatima, Fatima was informed that Abu Bakr prevented her fadak, and you know, um, she entered upon him and she started the speech. So this is page 111. Here you go, 112, as you can see, 113, as you can see, okay, we're continuing on, 114, okay, this speech is carrying on, 115, it carries on, 116, it carries on, okay, 117, so just to summarize, she's basically addressing the Muslims, and she's saying that Abu Bakr uh, you know, uh, extorted her inheritance, and then she's saying like, you know, are you, uh, more knowledgeable than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam etc etc and it carries on and on and then she turns to the grave of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in page 118 and she uh, addresses the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then Abu Bakr anhu responds to Fatima radiallahu anha and said oh Messenger the daughter of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laqad kana abuka bil mu'mineen raufan rahiman that your father was the most merciful to the believers وَعَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا And your uh, father was, um, uh, what's it called, to the kafirin, a, a punishment. And he continues on, and then, I just want to stop here because it goes on for so long. So, how long was this speech? I just showed you about eight pages. How long was this speech? Going back to what I said, she was in pain, severely ill, مُرِيدًا uh, شَدِيدًا she got beaten according to the narrative and lost her six month old child she, you know she ran out the house you know left a six month old baby you know requesting that she that they return ali anhu within the mosques of the world of the messenger went up and now uh the other narration which was severely ill uh, two men entered upon abu Bakr and umar and she wasn't pleased with them and they left and now she's she's gone 75 days she lived for she's gone and she's delivered what as you can see on screen She's delivered a 43-minute speech, according to this 
uh, reciter of Sheikh Haider al Mawla. Do you honestly believe Fatima Radla Anha, who was beaten severely by a grown man, Umar Radla Anhu, we know the strength of Umar Radla Anhu, beaten severely, lost a six month old child, was severely ill according to the, the narration in Dalaila Imma. Severely ill. And she's able, she lived for 75 days, and she's able to go to the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid, stand and deliver a 43 minute speech. Honestly, do you really believe that? Now, to top matters up, Fatima Radla Anha, during her illness, obviously miscarriage, six month old child, we don't believe none of this happened. This is a fabrication. Even amongst Shia scholarship, this is not um, you know, accepted. And the, the report from uh, Kitab Sulaim ibn Qais and, and other books as well, uh, it's, it's, it's not valid. And no one should accept this narration. Honestly, yes, like I said before, being a Sunni, uh, we revere the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like everyone should. The Dhamma companions, they were there with him for 23 years, revelation came, they witnessed it, they fought in battles, they manifested Islam, they spread Islam, they defended Islam. But again, this is where we split. Is it possible that Ali Sunnah wal Jama'ah would love Abu Bakr and Umar if they committed such a crime? Think about it rationally. Collect your thoughts and think, why would we love Abu Bakr and Umar if they committed these actions? We will be free from them. We will say, I dare you. But it didn't happen. It did not happen. Now, what we're going to do is show you that Fatima anha used to make regular trips to Uhud, walking, walking. And this was brought to uh, our attention by Farid, may Allah bless him, and he made some interesting points. So what I'm gonna do is, without adding my own details into it, let Farid explain how this doesn't make any sense. Have a listen. Here is a report, subhanAllah, I came across um, not too long ago. This is from Al-Kafi, and this is an authentic hadith, and check out what it says. This report comes through Ali ibn Ibrahim from his father, from Ibn Abi Umair, from Hisham bin Salim. It has been narrated from Abu Abdullah that he said, that I heard him say, that I heard him saying, Fatima lived after her father for 75 days. So Abu Bakr comes to power, they attack the house of Fatima, and then she dies 75 days later. Something doesn't make sense. If she's going to die, she's going to die immediately, not 75 days later. Let's carry on. Fatima lived after her father for 75 days, not being seen smiling or laughing. She would come to the graves of the martyrs twice during every Friday, Monday and Thursday. And she would be saying, over there was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and over there were the polytheists. To give you guys more of a context, what's meant here is she would actually go to the graves of the shuhada of Uhud. Okay? Three times a week. Excuse me, four times, twice on Friday. Do you know how far away the graves of shuhada Uhud are? It's about an hour and 15 minutes away. That's if you're walking. That's using Google Maps. Um, and no, that's not something you'd do if you had a broken rib. You wouldn't go to the graves four times a week. Imagine someone with a broken rib going to the graves of the Shuhada four times a week and telling people, that's where the Prophet, peace be upon him, was, and that's where the Mushrikeen were. Does that make sense? It doesn't seem like those are the actions of someone that's on the verge of death. Those actions seem to be the actions of someone who's perfectly healthy. So as you heard my brother free, may Allah bless him. Um, you know, how is that possible? How is that possible? Where presented all the narrations in here, okay, all the narrations in here, Apart from obviously Kitab Sulaim bin Qais, obviously I'm going to do that uh, in another video. There you go. Oh, there you go. And also, obviously, we show you Shia scholarship. Uh, we've got Mufid books here uh, and others we're going to go into. I don't have them right now. Let's show you the narration. As you can see on screen, here's the narration, uh, subhanAllah, that Fareed alluded to. Um, uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. You know, that's why there's no set 
narrative or timeline on this event. There's absolutely no timeline, and even they themselves wouldn't be able to answer these questions. That you could hold this view, that's your right. But it's our academic right to say, well, no, it's not correct. This is why they never place a timeline on this event. This is why they can never commit to a narrative. How much information shows you that what you're alleging is غير منطقي. It's without logic. That all the information that are presented, and I apologize, it's, it's a lengthy video. I'm sorry, I have to break it to you. It didn't happen. It goes against reason, it goes against logic, it goes against intelligence, it goes against the intellect. That putting it all together, Fatima radiallahu anha um, was not attacked. Um, honestly, she was not attacked. This is lies, these are fabrications, this is tarnishing the names of the noble companions Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma. If you want to disagree with Abu Bakr and Umar, that's fine, you do that. But to accuse them of murder, to accuse them of attacking the daughter of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we would not accept this. And no matter how much this movie tries to brainwash uh, the people by implicating Abu Bakr Umar to a crime, or Umar Radhiallahu to a crime they never committed, and you want to sort of present this in a so-called movie, be my guest. The facts on the ground and the information from your own sources after placing a timeline, those who have fairness and impartiality would say, yeah, it's far-fetched, isn't it? It's far-fetched. And that's what it is. It's very far-fetched. Take care of yourselves. Wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. قد أظلم الدرب ضحى وتحدر الدمع وضاقت برؤى كم مرة عصفت أنكين بداخلي كم مرة قضاك كلبي من أسامح أنت وكم كرهت 